Good, Rick. Uh, nice got a voice. to come in here. Well, it's uh, it's I do have a voice, which is nice, uh, and it's great to be in here live in the studio. Uh, I always like treat. doing live stuff, you know. It's always better. It, it is. It's better, and uh, it's great to see you, and uh, you're doing well. Everybody's uh, excited about Christmas coming. Now we can just get the Canucks going. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Can you, you? You've got your voice back. Can how you put I, the puck in the net? How do I get a little more volume? On uh, this, right underneath uh, there. there it, it, check. It, it, look yeah. underneath. There's a little volume uh, control. Let me there. just find this here. Here. Uh, okay. Got it? There we go. Beautiful. Because I'm straining a little bit to talk, and uh, when I get a little more volume like this, you know, as you get older, like me, and you've been doing this for so many years with the headsets, uh, have you noticed that uh, your hearing starts to go? Yeah. Your hearing starts to go. Uh, you don't hear very well. You, it's all those Motorhead you concerts for, you went to. You forget names. Uh, just just the whole ball of wax. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the good thing. I'm a kind of a glass is half full. Every cloud has a silver lining guy. Here's the good news about last night's game. You don't have to strain your voice getting too excited about goals. No. In, in fact, uh, that's the one of the things that uh, disturbs me about this hockey team. Uh, Shorty was asking me last night uh, when I... I uh, had to uh, go on R&R here a little bit uh, for a couple of games. Uh, if I had a different perspective watching it, listening to it, and so on. Mm-hmm. And the one thing is uh, that really sticks out in my mind is you get a little tired of watching them just chase, 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 chase. Whatever happened to tic-tac-toe, what a goal, or coast-to-coast coast like buttered toast, you know? Uh, things that were, you know, plays would bring uh, fans out of their seats Get them really excited. I mean, it's one thing to have a hard-working hockey team, and uh, for most nights, that's what this club is. Mm-hmm. But they're also in the entertainment business. I mean, you know, you got to put on a show. you got to be able to you're get right. people excited about what you're doing. And uh, it's come to the point in the season where I'm terribly concerned about the hockey team. It's nothing personal with the guys that put on the sweaters. I like every one of them. They're great guys. And they're trying their best. But you know what? This is the pro level. This isn't uh, Pee Wee or junior hockey anymore. You know, I read things like, oh, can you believe the bad break we got on the goal last night? I mean, you talk about bad luck. It went this way. It went that way. It went by the goal. I mean, come on. One goal and all of a sudden you're throwing up your hands and you're surrendering? I mean, I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the hockey fans buy it either. I mean, you got to dig in. you got to reach down. you got to find a way to win. You talk about lack of confidence. How do you find confidence? I don't know. What the hell? You've been doing this for years. You wouldn't have made it to the pro level, the NHL level, I mean, if you, weren't, if you didn't have the ability to fight through adversity, fight through slumps. You know? Mm-hmm. If you're going to be the best and play with the best, then deliver your best when your best is needed. Maybe the best... Uh, this team as currently configured just isn't good enough, Tommy. Well, I'm starting... I think it's a minor miracle they're around a 500 team with how little they score. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, my goodness, uh, this is... Uh, they're, they're, they're down so much in goal production, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, I've been around uh, a good number of years here now watching yeah. these teams, Canuck teams in their history. I can't remember a team so anemic as this one. I can't remember one. I can remember lousy teams, but they could score. The odd night they could put on a show and, you know, you felt pretty good. Now people are starting to leave the building and going, hey, wasn't that great? Uh, Luongo stopped 40 or 41. We got a couple of power play goals. Bring on the next team. (laughs) And then the next team comes in. Bingo. A whitewash. Four donut. Back to the drawing board. I mean, you know, come on. These guys, uh, yeah, you know... They, you know the old saying, Tommy, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You no, know, you sure can't. You sure can't. And the, hey, I, they bust their hump every night. But you look at down at the farm, you look at the young guys they bring up, they're all grinders. I mean, like, hey, Alex Burles, Rick Rippin, Todd Arbuck, those guys will work their asses off. They ain't going to score you many goals. No. And uh, that's the problem. Well, if they can't score them at the American Hockey League level, uh, you can't expect them to score at the NHL level. There, There's one thing that, you know... To, You want hard-working teams. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, But what's happened right now is uh, this team is uh, overloaded, uh, and uh, I'm talking financially now as far Mm -hmm. as the cap is concerned. I mean, where do you make any moves? 
and guys that maybe uh, might be of interest to other teams around the league aren't having what you'd call career years either. I mean, they're slumping badly. Uh, I don't have to name names. Everybody knows who they are. And, you know, uh, I was talking to a, a, a pro scout last night. If your best players, and we use this all the time, but it's so true in this game. If your best players aren't delivering their best 90% of the time in this game, you are you have a tough time winning. And, you know, all the pressure shouldn't be on Luongo only that he has to stop everything. That's... You know, that that's pressure that he doesn't deserve. This guy's a great goaltender. I know he is. And he's proven it. But, uh, you know, every night to think every time the uh, the opposition starts up the ice and they're coming towards you and you say, I can't let one in because we're going to lose. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't it tough to play a position like that, Absolutely. knowing that in your mindset that you cannot afford to let someone score? And on the other hand, uh, you know, everybody's running around and going here. I don't know. It's uh, it's discouraging, and like I say, it's nothing personal. It's not like uh, you know I'm. It, it sounds like I'm bagging on the team. I'm being a realist. I, I I'm talking the way hockey fans are talking now in their coffee breaks. What's wrong with the team? You know, it's like I did a show with you. Uh, what was it uh, Monday? I guess mm-hmm. yesterday. Yesterday. Yep. And Ryan Walter says, Tom, what 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 do you? How do you think they're going to get out of this scoring slump? I mean, asking broadcasters now. <laughs> Your Come on. guess is as good as anybody's. Well, I mean, get, let's get real here. Yeah. You know, we've got a hardworking coaching staff here that has juggled the lines like they're shuffling a deck of cards down in Vegas. I mean, boom, 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 boom. Everybody's playing with everybody. They're trying everything. I mean, and they're paid to coach. Yeah. And they should be. I mean, they're coaches. We're not coaches. You know, we're broadcasters. Uh, we're in the entertainment business. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's got to be solved by those 20 guys in the dressing room with that coaching staff and that management that's in charge right now. Yeah. Those are the guys that have to get the job done. But, Tommy, you can put as much lipstick and makeup and uh, do the hair as much on a 6 as you want. You're never going to turn her into a 10. You know what I mean? You can maybe make her a 7. I just don't think this team right now has the horses to produce offensively well, the enough. Cha- the, challenge is out, the challenge is out there, obviously, to the players. The challenge is there because the the the... the the opinion of most, like yourself, and like I'm talking here today, is that they're not good enough. They're not good enough right now. But I'd like to think that they could be good enough. I'd like to think that. And and I'll tell you why. Because I think they're better than, what is it, 14 of their last 16, less than three goals? Yeah, two goals or fewer. Yeah, two goals or fewer. And four 14 goals, of their last four goals games. total in their last six games. Hey, didn't you like Ian McIntyre's little... Our, uh, little line today in the paper. I got the biggest kick out of it. He said, Canuck goals are now are like remembering birthdays and extraterrestrial sightings. <laughs> it was a good line. It's a good line. Yeah. Because it's really gotten down to that. Let me ask you this, and this okay. is our poll question today, yeah. because we all like to play armchair general manager. What should Dave Nonis do? Should he stay the course, some minor changes, or at some point a major rebuild? Well, you know that's uh, that's difficult for me to to answer. Yeah. Only I'm not dodging the question. It's a it's certainly a, a very valid question. A one that uh, I'm sure uh, he's probably discussing too. Well, let me tell you how I feel about it. Okay, that'd be, be- good. okay because I don't think a major rebuild. They're at the stage where they have to start looking at that. Because, like I said earlier, it's a minor miracle that they're around a 500 hockey team. They aren't out of it. So. Minor changes for now. Down the road, maybe you have to look at the bigger picture and say, hey, it ain't working. But at this stage, uh, I'm not sure raising the white flag on this season and starting to build for future years is is necessarily the right course of action because somehow they're still in the hunt. You know, if I was to just kind of reflect back and take a look uh, going into the season, uh, I, I knew this was going to be a hard-working team mm-hmm. uh, because I, I thought the, the guys would respond after missing the playoffs, particularly last year, with what was supposed to be a very good team. And they got out of the gate like they were a great team. Uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the, the hangover with the Pertuzzi incident, uh, the goaltending wasn't good enough, uh, da 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 they missed out. So... The players reporting back, the veteran players are going to say, okay, this is a whole new look. Boy, we've got a new coaching staff that we have to impress, that we deserve the ice time because we can perform. Blah, blah. So you get a pretty good camp. And uh, you knew it was going to be a hardworking team. 
I think what has happened here, this is in my view, is the free agent signings haven't turned out to be good enough. They have not turned out to be good enough. Let's take a look at who they are. Willie Mitchell, I think, is terrific. Mm -hmm. Willie Mitchell hasn't missed a beat. He's playing every bit as well as he played in Minnesota. I like everything that Willie does. I love his leadership. I love the way he carries himself. Uh, He's a true professional, this guy. And he competes every night. Love him. think he's terrific. But let's take a look at the free agent signings. Okay, uh, let's start with a guy that never gets in the lineup anymore, Tommy Santala. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they've missed the boat on him. This was a player, from the feedback that I have been given, uh, that just dominated in the American Hockey League. I mean, not just was a so-so player, but he dominated. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, maybe he hasn't had the the right opportunity. I guess if you talk to Santala, he says, well, I haven't really been given a chance. I don't know. He hasn't been in the lineup very much, so they're getting nothing there. But they have a contract. Yep. Okay? And a one-way deal. Yeah. Then you take a look at, oh, my favorite, Jan Bulas. Now, really, I mean, we're talking 14 games now without a point. Mm -hmm. 14 games without a point. And he's played with everybody. He has. They've played him everywhere. He's been at center ice. He's been on the wing. He's played with the Sedins. He's played with Morrison. They had him killing penalties on the weekend. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, you're right. Come on. Nothing is coming from that guy. Now, Taylor Pyatt, is, to me, has turned out to be a pretty darn good free agent signing. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, the guy has scored goals. He's big and strong. You can see he's got an upside. So here we go. Mark Schwinnard. Oh. I... <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> to bring that one well, up. Well, I mean, come on. Let's get real here. No, you're right. I mean, does this guy, uh, does he have a competitive juice in his body? Is there any fire in the belly? I mean, you know, he's a smoothie, takes the face off, goes down. I mean, I, I'd like to, I'd like to see some, uh, you know, I mean, really. And you made so, the point so, earlier. So now. What do you do with those you, guys? Well, my point is, if these guys were producing like Dave Nonas thought that they would, and Dave has said with me uh, when I've interviewed him, and he's said it to you guys, too. We're not asking these players to deliver any more than they have delivered in the past. Bullis, just give us the 20 goals. Schwenard, just give us the 14 goals. You know? Mm-hmm. And then you get some of the veterans, like Matt Cook. Can you believe it? One goal. Trevor Linden hasn't scored since the opening game of the season. Uh, it just keeps going and going and going. There is just no scoring. Uh, Brendan Morrison is having a year that uh, he'd like to forget. He's a much better hockey mm-hmm. player. I know he is, uh, than it's happening. But, you know, I mean, even a guy like Morrison, uh, you know, he's maybe the best interview on the team. He always faces the music. He tells it the way it is. I mean, you know, I'd like to see him, you know, maybe forget, turn down some interviews. Just go out there and play. Yeah. Enjoy himself again. Make it happen. Put some of the ownership on some of the other guys to, to give all the quotes after the game. That's how I feel about it. All right, Tommy. Anyway. You've had a good run at it. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> but you know what? As I said, hey, hey you listen, know I, I, I think haven't, you, you I expressed haven't... exactly how most of the fans in this well, town feel right now. About I've, this always, I've, I've tried to do my job like that. Yep. You know, I, I, I try to, uh, you know, uh, I want people to be excited about their hockey team. And I, I want them to enjoy the excitement if they can't be there to kind of feel it through the radio and everything else. That's, that's what we've tried to do all these years. And uh, we've had fun doing it. And this team, as I said, it's nothing personal. Uh, every one of these guys, and I can tell the pain public and the hockey fan in British Columbia, these are terrific young men. These are great young men. They really are. They're, they're, there's not a bad apple in the bunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're trying. You know, every time a guy laces up his skates, you know, if you've been any kind of an athlete at all, I don't care what sport it is, 